I, like we need a brand new swing arm, I don't know. I need to record that. Welcome back to No Tears Frontiers Diaries. In the last episode, we went to Overland Expo West and we had an incredible time in the petrified forest of Arizona. And we left off at the petrified forest heading east. We had 10 days to get to the next Overland Expo in Virginia. And going from Arizona to Virginia on a motorcycle in 10 days is some people love that type yeah, of some people kind do of that iron butt like challenge. Days, yeah. Right. Some people so can do it in just a couple days. But, for, but our... for us, we like to go very slow. Yeah. We like to take our time and enjoy the areas. We like to do long, sweeping, you know. Yeah, and we don't like all highway miles. We like to take back roads and yeah. um, really get to see the countryside and get to see the state. And this was not going to be like that. This was just going to be chugging it all the way east. Mm-hmm. So we headed off from the Petrified Forest and headed east to New Mexico. Once we got into New Mexico, there's the Continental Divide there and it, you know, runs along the Rocky Mountains. It's kind of like the backbone of the United States. So the watershed goes east from there. Which is crazy because it's so far west. Yeah. You realize that all the water from there ends up in the Mississippi kind of blew my mind. Right. So. It is nuts. And then obviously on the other side of the mountains, it goes west. So we were crossing the Continental Divide in New Mexico and it gets to be quite high in altitude. I'm not sure how high it was at that point, but we could feel the chill setting in and there were some pretty dark storm clouds on the horizon. And I thought, well, you know, we've been through rainstorms before. This is going to be fine. We just put on all our rain gear. But this one turned out to be a pretty intense hailstorm. happens a lot in arid desert areas. We get into quite a few hailstorms, uh, and, and this one wasn't so much fun. <laughs> no, usually they're brief, you know, yeah. but like the, my, my mind was already kind of concentrating on, you know, the chain and how that was, you know, yeah. not all that awesome to say the very least. Uh, but yeah, just kidding. It's like you're getting shot at by like paintball guns, you know, or like airsoft. It's just that's <laughs> totally it. Yeah, yeah, you can like hear these things just pelting you on your helmet yeah, I can and your feel jacket. It I'm yeah, in front. you have <laughs> I a can human. Feel it too. I can't imagine. I'm your I know. Human shield. Yes, you are my human she shield. You can go like this. And it's still bad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you just get pelted by these things. And I had up to that point, uh, just like nothing that I wear is waterproof, you know, and so it's just, yeah, you're sitting in this just cold wetness and it's just, yeah, it's, it's bad awful. because the hail obviously forms where it's cold enough to form. But once it gets down to our level on the ground, it starts melting pretty quick. So it's that cold wet. Yeah. That's that's the worst. It is. It but was also just, just and like you just the brutal onslaught. On a motorcycle, there's nothing to do. Oh, it's like yeah. you soiled yourself, but instead of it being warm, <laughs> it's freezing cold. It's just yeah, awful. it was pretty bad. You wear a backpack, and I was just watching these little hail balls collect along the backpack. But you handled it like a pro, and. Um, I, I don't know what it's like to ride a motorcycle. She could through only it. see the back of me. The front of me <laughs> was not pro face. The front of me was upset, pissy, just sucks mode. But you were doing I great. I didn't wipe out. But yeah. 
nine out of ten people wouldn't have wiped out. I just just chugged forward. I knew we had to get somewhere. Yeah. And you know there was there was things to fix and there was warmth to be had. So, yeah, I mean, we had to go. Yeah, and we had to just keep going along, and that's exactly what we did. So eventually, we passed through the hailstorm, thankfully, and the clouds dispersed, and it was back to open skies. And we were in New Mexico. Yeah, uh, there is a huge Native American presence there, and you can really feel that Native American presence as you go through. It's on the flag. It's it's everywhere. It, you know, it's every gas station. Um, there's billboards all over the highways that uh, talk about stores that you can go to that are Native American owned, that have um, things that you can buy that support the local communities. There's a lot of reservation land out there. Yeah. And we stopped at a gas station just to get food and gas. It was huge. It had a huge storefront area that was full of Native American crafts. And I just find that really beautiful to see. <laughs> We quickly had to go through New Mexico. We passed through Albuquerque, which is a beautiful city, and headed straight into the top area of Texas. What is that area called? I always call it the Panhandle, but I don't think that's right. I think well, that's there's like the, the Panhandle of Oklahoma, so yeah. maybe it's like the under Panhandle. No, it's the top hat. <laughs> it's the top hat. The Lincoln yes. top hat. We're from Illinois. <laughs> we don't know anything about our own country. The it's top the Lincoln hat. top hat of Texas. Damn. Yes, and you can really see how the Southwest desert area turns into the Plain States at that point. <laughs> fields, this countryside. Uh, there's a lot of cow farming out there. There's a lot of agricultural industry and it gets to be very, very, very flat. And we were heading through and you started feeling that there's kind of something wrong with the motorcycle. You'd felt that at the expo. You knew there might be something wrong with the chain. It was just getting from bad to worse. And I knew it and I can hear it clinking. And every time I got to a red light or a stop sign, you know, getting gas or whatever, I could hear the chain, you know, fighting itself up on the front sprocket and then going again. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, when, when you know what the problem is and you can't fix it, it's just, it's really frustrating. Need a brand new swing arm? I don't know. Record that. And you know, in our case, we had to keep going because now we're on a time limit. But uh, you know, we—I wouldn't. If we were in a completely unsafe scenario, I would have stopped and foregone the expo. But uh, we were in a position where we can keep going. I had planned to go camping that night at a place that we'd found on iOverlander. It looked beautiful. Oh, yeah. It was on Lake Meredith, which is right above Amarillo, Texas. It was pretty, but my mood was so sour. And then... Yeah, by the time we got there, you knew there was something really, really wrong we, with the chain. Yeah, and I'm calling everybody and anybody I could, and they're reaching out to every dealership and the and the states just to see who had it and who can ship it. I mean, the chain was 
like the chain guard was gone, right? The chain guard was gone yet again. And uh, a lot of you, I, I know, I, it's something you should inspect every, you know. Yeah. Yes. And, and, but it's just, it goes from, oh my God, it goes from everything is fine to it's gone. Like there's no like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, there is a wear on it. And if you can see like the, the chain bolts you're supposed to, or the, the stud, the master link, mm -hmm. you know, then you should start replacing it. But I always just put like a, it'll last me 5,000 miles and I'm good. Yeah. And that's just not the case. So the chain guard was gone. It was eating into... There was two, like, just dragging claw scratches in the subframe of the, the the swing arm. And and that's, like, what keeps the motorcycle together. Well, it's just right? two separate... I mean, the, the whole rear assembly rests on that swing arm. Wow. And it's, so if that got eaten through and that, it wasn't it would be, strong anymore, yeah, it would be really, be really bad. <laughs> So here we are at a beautiful location, Marissa's trying to keep a positive spirit, and I'm yeah. just kind of poopy-faced, and then this... But you had good reason to be. Yeah, but then the storm yeah. just rolls in and just knocks us on our ass, and it was just... It was like the smallest little cloud. You know, you could just look out over this lake. It was a beautiful view. We're kind of up on a cliff. There were all these camping spots everywhere, and there's like this little cloud in the distance, and I'm like, oh. It's not so bad. It's not going to hit us. But you can hear the rat. thunder it in it. It was crazy. Oh, it was horrible. We got soaked. And they have these little roofs. It didn't matter. The rain was coming sideways. Sideways. It, it was, was completely just, sideways. We just sat there like, you just know. Just being drenched by awful. the rain. I, I mean, I put on my helmet. I had all my rain gear on. It didn't matter. We got yeah. soaked just sitting there. And we realized, all right, this is... All good reasons not to stay here I was like, for the We night. need to leave for multiple reasons. Yeah. And it was kind of getting to the point where we would have liked to have set up camp for the night and called it a day. And on any other day, I would have just, I would have been fine with that and said, I don't want to move anymore anyway. Yeah. But uh, I had reached out to Oklahoma City, a KTM dealership there, and they said that they had the chain and the sprocket and the chain guard for no good reason. No, the only... They said they were the only ones in the country. Yeah. And that was where we were headed then, next. All the dealerships don't want overhead anymore. There's everything is parts to order. Yeah. We all know how 2021 is with shipping stuff from anywhere. It's, right. So we were extremely, extremely lucky. And then the bonus little cherry on the surprise awesome mini muffin of awesomeness from KTM <laughs> was that we had some good friends that lived in Oklahoma City. The uh, Dragoos. Yeah, Bill and Susan, who have their own dart, the Dragoo adventure riding. Super amazing motorcycle people. Like, yeah. Bill is like a motorcycle mastermind. Incredible. So we were heading there anyway. Yeah. I mean, what was the luck in that? Yeah, we figured we'd pack up all our stuff and just try to f ride as far east as we could. I was not, I knew it was too long of a ride to get there all in one night, especially in yeah. my, my mood and the, you know, the chain. And We'd just gotten soaked in this rainstorm. Yeah. <laughs> it had been a long day. And so we just, it, we, it was like four hours away, but it was already like five Yeah. and we already had been riding for, you know, X amount of hours. And so I just said, let's get... Just two hours closer, then we'll have a baby little ride tomorrow. Yeah, and we'll go then, really early and then arrive, and they'll be able to hopefully work their magic yeah. throughout the day. And so that's what we did. We headed off.
out until the sun was pretty much set. I mean, yeah, we don't was, like to yeah. ride at night, but we just kept going as long as we possibly could. Mm -hmm. And we ended up in a small town called Wheeler. And we pulled up to a little hotel that they had there. We were like, well, this is it, you know? If we <laughs> this is where we're staying. I don't care if there's bed bugs or whatever. And <laughs> like we, we, we have to we stay pull here. in. So we were talking to the little woman who owned the hotel and uh, she said that there was no hot water because the water heater was being serviced. Yeah, and it was totally broken. Yeah, but she gave us like a ten dollar discount, which is more than uh, I cared. Yeah, you know, I just wanted a warm room. The heater worked, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I needed just to sleep off my foul. It turned room. out to be perfect. Even though it didn't have a shower, that's fine. You know, we were headed to our friend's house anyway. Yeah. Um, the next day, we just really needed this hotel to be a little saving grace for us, yeah. um, just to get us to Oklahoma City the next day, well rested. Uh, and also, we were getting to be quite concerned that if the chain just fell apart on us, that could be really dangerous on the road. Yeah, so of course. Well, we were, uh, yeah, we were trying to be as careful riding on the motorcycle as we could. And that day it was just, it was too late to be careful anymore. It was just too late to care anymore. We just needed yeah. an, an end scene. Um, but I was hungry and there was a crappy little gas station and then there was Kim's you know, restaurant. <laughs> and from the outside it looked a little tough and rough and it had, you know, the, some more silhouettes of cowboy and cowgirl on the <laughs> yep. outside of it. And I was like, well, this could probably not be all that awesome. But we went in and it was so good. It was so delicious. It was so good. And it the, was amazing. You know, the, the cashier slash waiter, same dude. And, you know, like just real friendly and just helped lighten the mood in an otherwise what was pretty crappy day. So good food with a uh, good service, yeah. friendly, friendly people. It and turned out to be quite all right. <laughs> really quite good. all right, quite <laughs> okay. The food was excellent, the day averaged back up to quite okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but we woke up at four in the morning yeah. because we had to get going really early. I wanted to drop the motorcycle off at KTM as soon as they opened. They said, yeah. hey, we got your stuff. And I, I knew that they're, you know, this is the, the summer and people like they they have bikes to repair and would realistically would have pushed this out four or five, six weeks. They were doing me a huge favor because they under, understood the circumstance. <laughs> to Oklahoma City we hit so much wind the wind yeah. was insane coming into Oklahoma City I mean mentally I was kind of like how I was in Patagonia when yeah. again the chain was uh, the same situation was happening the chain yeah. guard had eroded it was eaten into the frame you think I would have learned a life lesson there but then the wind was just battering me Like this was just the same in Oklahoma. It was just, you know, not one of my finer moments mentally. Um, yeah. But I knew we were we were close to getting everything resolved. So, so we dropped it off there at KTM, and they were so kind to take us in right yeah. away. 
And yeah, we got picked up by, by Bill, Bill Jagu. Had a blast with him. And when I drop the bike off at KTM, there's always this fun little feeling. The, the, there's a lot of travelers out there who do really amazing stuff on the bike. But my bike has like this aura to it. When they look at it, they're like, what the <laughs> hell is that? Where the hell have you been? You know? And right. it's like, what is that? Sheepskin? <laughs> is that, you know? Yeah, it's it just, like, it looks very bizarre. Yeah. But, uh. <laughs> We had an amazing time with Bill and Susan, and and, we did. and KTM called me up the very next day and said, "Come get your bike. She's good to go." I couldn't believe it. Yeah, we were so fortunate. We were so fortunate that we had such wonderful friends there. That this was the only place in the United States yeah. that had the things we needed, and why they had these things, I have no idea. But um, yeah, we were just really counting our blessings at that point. And we were also excited to see Bill again, even though we had to leave quickly to get out to Virginia. But yeah. he was going out to Virginia going, as well. Yeah, we were going to see Different timeline, well. but he was also going to be at the expo out there. Yeah. So, um, but it was cool to reminisce with him. Yeah. He's just a great, great dude. Very, very knowledgeable. He's a motorcycle master. Uh, I took his course yes. years and years and years ago. He has an off-road riding course and, called uh, DART. Jagu Adventure Rider Training. Yeah. And uh, just uh, the, the lessons I learned in that class, you know, I actually used them Invaluable. out on their own. It was, mm -hmm. it was insane. And, you know, just, just to rekindle with some, some good old stories and life experience from both of us was yeah. just kind of, you know, welded the relationship even, even closer. It was real, just good people. And it just made my sour mood from the last couple of days just to a, uh, you know, a, a lesson that I seem to learn over and over every time I get frustrated that things will work out and things will be good again. Yes. And so, yeah. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And in our next episode, we continue our crazy adventures trying to get across the United States as fast as we can in order to get to the final expo of the season in Virginia. So stay tuned, and we'll be seeing you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Peace.